Mark Maillard is Emmy nominated for directing All the Bells Say from Succession. I'm David Buchanan with Gold Derby. Uh, Mark, such a pleasure to be with you today. First and foremost, I want to ask you, um, well, congratulate you on the Emmy nomination um, and ask you how you heard about the news this time and does it feel any different from your first for directing for Succession? Um... I can't remember how I heard about it. I think somebody shouted through from the office next door. Um, yeah, yeah, that one of one of my AD colleagues shouted it through, which was lovely. Does it feel any different? No, it feels equally lovely. Um, I'm really proud, really proud of the uh, of the episode. Um, it is one of those where I just I don't think I could have worked any harder um, and couldn't really have done much better. Um, so. So I didn't leave. There was there was kind of no regrets. There was no sort of uh, there was no. Oh, I wish I tried harder at that. I really did try my hardest, and that's the that's the best you can do, isn't it? So um, so how lovely to get some recognition for that. Yeah, it was really it was really lovely. I'm I am really proud. Oh no question, it's um, a stunning episode, um, and we're going to dive into a lot of the the wonderful scenes from that. But I just want to ask you to start too. You directed four episodes of, of this season, the first two and the last two. Um, so what was it about this episode in particular, other than, as you're saying, you know, the, the work, you know, you're really proud of the work uh, for this one. Was there something about this one in particular that made you want to submit this for Emmy consideration versus, you know, some of the other ones, which are also, you know, really strong work? No, I'm really proud of the season as a whole, whether, you know, not just to, for, for my directing work, but for for you know with my producer hat on for for the work of the whole team and, and it was so lovely to see uh, my other directing colleagues Kathy and Lorene also nominated and and of course you know my colleagues uh, with the DGA awards earlier this year um so I do <laughs> I do not try not to do that it's all about me I'm really genuinely proud of the, of the whole team with with all the bells say uh, I was fantastically lucky as a director to you know how many times in one's life does a script like that land on one's desk. I mean, Jesse is a phenomenal writer at the absolute top of his game. And the intensity and the passion and the craft uh, of the script was just undeniable. Uh, uh, and so you know, the first feeling after the, oh my goodness, I get to direct this is, oh my God, I hope I don't mess this up. Um, there's So there is a, just a determination. And I think I speak for really pretty much all, all of our cast and crew the writing is so extraordinary that all of us come to come to work just wanted to do it justice and, and and try to augment what's already brilliant on the page. Yeah, no question. Um, this episode and the penultimate episode are set in Italy. Um, um, so what I wanted to ask you about that is for both of them and especially this one, how did you go about capturing? I mean, it's just it's such a stunning and beautiful landscape. So what was your approach to trying to capture the grandeur and the kind of scale of it? Um, with the camera because it really does translate so beautifully on screen. In, try, in trying to capture grandeur, it's a, it's a double-edged sword for us because we're determinedly trying not to fetishize the wealth um, of, of, of the characters. The, the characters take it for granted, uh, their environment, their, their, their privilege, and therefore we try with the language of the camera to, um, to express that, to follow that, um, and in our staging we'll see our characters constantly in beautiful places wherever we're shooting um but rarely if ever will they even acknowledge that environment and and i think the so even though the camera can see it the we're usually particularly when it's in the context of of our characters being in that environment um they will more often times more often than not be oblivious to it um and so we're trying to subtly play that that distance of the characters, how how how, how internalised they are, and how disconnected they are from the beauty, and, uh, and and taking it all for granted, really. So that that's really important at, at every stage. So so we use we try to weaponize, you know, the 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 landscape and the beauty of where we are to 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 make a comment on the on our characters and the way they live their lives, I suppose. Yeah, that's so interesting because the series over all three seasons has shot in some incredible, uh, stunning places and the, the viewer goes on that journey. But as you're saying, the characters, you know, take this for obviously take it for granted because of, you know, all the traveling they do and, and their privilege and wealth. Um, let's start, let's dive into a few of the specific scenes from this episode because it is so terrific. Um, I want to start where the episode starts, which, which is this kind of cliffhanger from the penultimate episode where we see Kendall in trouble in the pool. Um, 
I don't know how much of that was intended to kind of leave the audience thinking that Kendall might have um, died at the end of that episode, but we pick up in the season finale with Logan and there's kind of a lot of tension and suspense around, you know, what has happened with Kendall. So just, I just wanted to ask you about, you know, opening the episode in that way, you know, what was the intention of, you know, trying to hold that suspense as long as possible? Mm. Well, I must admit it wasn't to, to try to hold it as long as possible. We, we very deliberately, you know, um, you know, gave that information from Logan, you know, your dad's all right, um, within about 20 seconds of the episode starting. I mean, that, in terms of cliffhangers and that particular style trope, um, um, it's not that we were uncomfortable with that. We didn't want to, to feel too manipulative. We wanted that story beat of uh, uh, the end of episode, of the previous episode to be the, the, the absolute kind of emotional nadir for Kendall. Um, uh, and uh, and that led us towards this, the end of that particular storyline was there, but it felt, I think it would have felt manipulative or overly manipulative to extend it, to, to hide the ball there, I, I think from the audience. So, so I think in terms of trying to stay with the integrity of the storytelling, um, we wanted to move on from that quite swiftly, I think, as we started the next storyline. Right, of course. Uh, and speaking of Kendall and a kind of emotional climax to the season, and even you know perhaps the series thus far, this wonderful scene with the three siblings where Kendall kind of reveals what happened at Shiv's wedding to to his uh, two of his three siblings. Um, I just wanted to ask you, you know, the episode up until that point is building in kind of pace and um, tension as uh, Shiv and and Roman kind of start to understand what's happening with the sale and with Logan. And that scene is just so deliberative. And so it has such a wonderful slow and, uh, you know, pace. Just wanted to ask you how you thought that fit into the arc of the episode, because it really, it is such a gut punch to the audience, especially as we're kind of building in pace and then have this huge release. So talk about, you know, kind of finding the pace of that in, in the kind of arc of the episode. Yeah, there's always, it always appears to me that somewhat, okay, somewhat reductive description, but there, there's a twin narrative going on through through all the scripts, um, one of which is the plot line, um, which is very often to do with um, to do with corporate structure, wheeling, wheeling and dealing, uh, uh, the, the future of the company to which you know all the characters are utterly obsessed. Um, and th and then there's a secondary um, uh, and then there's a secondary storyline, which is the the emotional joust, the the, the emotional um, uh, turmoil under the surface of, of, of the characters and the cage they're in. Um, so it was really just a question of uh, of just um, you know flicking channels really um, at, at that point. We'd you know we'd focused at that point as 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 it becomes clear, particularly to Shiv, that she, uh, she's putting it together, and and Roman is able to snap out, or she snaps them out of his denial, um, uh, uh, and. Uh, and that, of course, you know, in a normal narrative would be the gear change, uh, would be the, the kickoff point to, okay, let's go and confront this, which of course Shiv tries to do. And the brilliance in the writing there is that just when you think that's where the narrative is going, it is absolutely these breaks go on, um, th th this kind of emergency stop happens because in the way that in real life, nothing happens at the right time or at the most convenient time. Uh, at the most inconvenient time, um, this this arc that that Jeremy's character Kendall has been on all season, if if not all series, as you say, um, it's, happens to be triggered at that moment, uh, perhaps somewhat by uh, by the guys bringing the garbage out or, or whatever it is that's been culminated in brewing. Just that eruption happened. That that that. Um, uh, and so then you have these exquisite competing forces of the the the, the need to to confront the, the the business deal to try and stop this deal with the need for the, the common humanity to support their brother in in his breakdown. Um, uh, and that was just beautiful writing and, and a beautiful structure to that. And and because we'd very specifically structured the, the, the cutting rhythm. Jer uh, J Jesse writes very musically and, and, uh, and I try to reflect that in the, in the cutting rhythms in the edits also, that, um, that there is that, uh, the, that allegro before it and suddenly you can go into that largo because you've earned it um, uh, and, just, uh, and that's reflected in the camera movement and the, in the stillness and the composition and just holding the three of them in the frame as much as possible during that, uh, uh, 
during that evolution into what what is you know the next movement of that particular music yeah and it's obviously a stunningly good performance from jeremy it's absolutely beautiful scene just talk talk to us about walking him through that and kind of tackling all of the different beats including the physicality i mean so much of it you know is is in the body language of of kendall and also the other characters you know reacting so just talk about you know, tackling this, I have to imagine, incredibly pivotal um, scene for, for the four of you, you know, to find kind of the beats. Yes, it's funny with the scene of that magnitude um, for, for, the, for the four of us, for all of us in, involved, you know, actually on set there and in the writing, we, we have a shorthand now, obviously we've been working together since season one. Um, and we don't tend to talk a lot before it, if I'm honest. And we each have our different processes um, uh, and obviously I'm working it I'm working the location and how I'm going to shoot it but in terms of but we don't talk a lot um, specifically because we like it to evolve and we love the spontaneity and because the actors are so damn clever and know their characters so well I'm worried that when we talk too much beforehand it starts to perhaps take away from the spontaneity of their own preconceptions of their own instincts on the scene so so that we do a lot of rehearsing on film and that's what happened on that day we're, we're exploring the scene it becomes a bit of a, a a bit of a kind of free form jazz um which sounds massively pretentious and particularly when the writing is so precise it's it's an odd contradiction on some level but we try to keep it as free and uncontrived initially and then start to shape it and explore what's working and not working and then build from there. And, and all three actors have very different processes. So we're all trying to weave and find our way together. It was hard. It was probably as hard or harder in that scene than any scene that we've ever shot before, not just because of the intensity of, of, of the scene and, uh, you know, it's a very long scene also and just the, the harshness of the environment with this dust blowing up uh, poor Sarah Snoop just getting literally dust blown into eyes it was closed up by halfway through takes off and then we'd spend 15 minutes trying to wash her eye out uh before we could go another take and in this incredible kind of Mediterranean heat beating down on everybody um it was it was really hard um but we do what we do we stick at it and we uh and we iron out the issues we augment what's working and gradually you shape it and then at some point really considerably late on in the in the number of takes compared to we normally find our groove a little earlier or a lot earlier um in this one it took a long time for everything to to to, to fall into place and, and when it did um it, it was it was like a gut punch to me watching it was so exquisitely intense and emotional is exactly what it needed to be and hopefully what what the viewers see on the screen yeah, no question. And speaking of another incredibly intense scene, let's talk about the end of the season and the episode. Um, just take us inside that room because every character is walking into that scene with different motivations, different levels of knowledge of what's happening. It's such a kind of brilliant um, kind of set piece for the season. Just talk to us about, you know, navigating all of that kind of complexity as a director and and just what was it like to shoot in that, in that space? Uh, uh, again, just a massive benefit of brilliant writing. We'd 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 had this whole overture for that scene, uh, of course, with the with the journey to Logan's um, villa, with with the trepidation uh, and the bravado of the three siblings making their alliance on the way there. As as the sun goes down, it gets darker and darker, and the, and they're getting closer and closer. And the trepidation and the, and the anticipation of that confrontation builds again, musically almost. Um, so that by the time we get there, we and the characters are so keyed up. Um, uh, uh, for this for this confrontation with their father, um, the location itself was a gift. Um, we we've been looking at a, a, a much more kind of uh, old school Italian villas, um, uh, and this one had a, a tremendous wealth and a power statement about it, um, uh, uh, but also a neutrality. And there was something about that which felt emotionally cold I suppose which felt like a really interesting way to go um, uh, as a counterpoint to the passions of the characters in the scene um, mostly it was the statement of power in the room um, that, that was so seductive to to me as a location choice um, and the way that we were able to stage on both wings um, 
with the minions at one end and the executives at the other across the hallway. Um, so it staged out beautifully and, uh, and the atmosphere was peculiarly cold, as I said. Um, and, and really, once you get into the scene, we just work it. Uh, yeah, you just got to do the work. You just got to know, follow every character's art, where they are, what their instincts are, and uh, what they're going to want, where they would be relative to Logan in the room. It's, it's what directors do, isn't it? Um, and, and of course, with the benefit of the incredible cast um, who know their characters so well, it just becomes dance between us. We shot it over one and a half day we kind of broke the back of the scene on a long day and then picked up some coverage on the monday the trickiest bit by far was was finding the moment to cut to black um the script was very clear that that the scene and the season would end we always knew that we were working towards the season end being being matthew but tom's betrayal of shiv um uh, and her recognition of that moment um but the actual cut to black was much more problematic than we anticipated than i anticipated um and the the key to that was working with matthew and sarah and, and sarah eventually breaking away from her siblings um in, into that you know downstage moment where she comes foreground and matthew comes back up over her shoulder and we were able to get that juxtaposition between her horror and pain at the betrayal uh, and and his uh, and that being hidden from him over her shoulder and when when we found that moment i knew that's where we could you know get get that cut to black and end the season it it, it was just it was working the working the moment working the moment and uh, uh, and thankfully those actors gave us that yeah it's a perfect way to end um that incredible scene and season and a great way to end um our chat today too uh mark my uh congratulations on the emmy nomination for directing congratulations on the best drama series nomination um for succession season three and thanks so much for talking to gold derby today thanks so much for having me david it was lovely talking to you mm -hmm.